Islam is not a religion of peace. Anyone who still claims this in 2015 is either stupid or they're a liar. Every time I say that Islam is not a religion of peace, I get death threats from Muslims. How dare you say that Islam is violent? We're going to prove you wrong by violently killing you. At least 10 Muslim countries impose the death penalty for apostasy. They execute people for saying they're no longer Muslims. Polls show that the majority of Muslims support killing people for saying they're no longer Muslim. Executing people for not believing the same thing as you is violent and wrong. It's not peaceful. Because it's the That's only it. religion that acts like the mafia that will f kill you that, if you say the wrong true. thing, I mean, draw the wrong picture, or write the wrong book. So you At least 10 Muslim countries impose the death penalty for homosexuality. They execute people for their sexual preference. Polls show that the majority of Muslims are completely intolerant of homosexuality. Executing people for being gay is violent and wrong. It's not peaceful. At least 11 Muslim countries or ruling tribes in those countries stone women to death. They stone women to death for allegedly committing adultery. Rape victims are also stoned to death. Polls show that the majority of Muslims in these countries support stoning women to death for adultery. Stoning women to death for committing adultery or being raped is violent and wrong. It's not peaceful. Whenever Muslims carry out terror attacks, they cite the Quran as justification. The Quran contains a plethora of passages that directly encourage Muslims to kill non-Muslims. I'll leave a list in the description. Note that there isn't a Quran 2, which is only read by radicals or extremists. There's only one Quran in which acts of violence are specifically encouraged. Although a minority, a disturbing number of Muslims support terror attacks. For example, 39% in Afghanistan and 29% in Egypt. Killing innocent people in terror attacks is violent and wrong. It's not peaceful. But there's over a billion Muslims who would never commit terror, kill gay people, stone women to death, or execute apostates. Right. But they subscribe to a belief system which advocates all of those things and carries them out. So they have two choices. Either continue to advocate all those violent things, or acknowledge that Islam is violent and not a religion of peace, and agree that Islam is in dire need of a reformation. But most victims of terror attacks are Muslims. Right, so they have two choices. Either continue to deny that Islam is violent and keep being killed in terror attacks, or acknowledge that Islam is violent and not a religion of peace, and agree that Islam is in dire need of a reformation. Saying most victims of terror are Muslims is not an argument. But what about the Crusades? Remember that during the Crusades and the Inquisition, People committed terrible deeds in the name of Christ. The fact that Christians fought against Muslims in a military campaign nearly a thousand years ago does not excuse the fact that Muslim countries in 2015 kill gay people, stone women to death, and execute Muslims who give up on the faith of Islam. Saying, but what about the Crusades? is not an argument. But what about Western foreign policy? The fact that Western military forces have launched unprovoked acts of regime change in the Middle East is terrible, and I've been a vocal critic of those wars for the entirety of my adult life. History has proven that such wars only empower violent jihadists. But that doesn't excuse Muslim countries in 2015 killing gay people, stoning women to death, and executing those who give up on the faith of Islam. Western foreign policy has had no effect on laws derived from the Quran in countries like Pakistan and Saudi Arabia, which impose the death penalty for these supposed crimes. Saying, but what about Western foreign policy, is not an argument. But what about violent passages in the Old Testament? Unlike Islamic countries, there are virtually no Christian nations besides Uganda that kill gay people, execute apostates, and stone women to death. That's because Christianity had a reformation in the 1500s, which purged it of its most intolerant and violent aspects. Islam hasn't had a reformation. That's why it's still intolerant and 
violent, pointing to intolerant passages in the Old Testament, which no one has acted on for hundreds of years, is not an argument. Saying, but what about violent passages in the Old Testament, is not an argument. How do we move towards reforming Islam? Well, first, we don't shout down the voices of reform by calling them bigots, apostates, and Islamophobes. We don't automatically denounce anyone who criticizes the violent and intolerant parts of the Quran as a racist. Islam is not a race. And we don't excuse or hide the fact that Islam is violent by redundantly citing an array of supposed justifications which are completely unrelated. So, I welcome your comments. But here's a challenge. Try to rebut my argument without using the words bigot, racist, or Islamophobe. Try to directly address my argument without citing the Crusades, Western foreign policy, or passages in the Old Testament. None of those things disprove that Islam is a violent and intolerant belief system. Also, claiming I'm a Zionist shill, a crypto Jew, or a Christian fundamentalist with no proof is not an argument. And again, Islam is not a race. It's an ideology. It's gross. It's racist. But it's not. Saying it's racist to criticize Islam is like saying it's racist to criticize socialism or atheism. That's not an argument. Islam is not a religion of peace. But I challenge you to prove me wrong. But please, just try and lay off the death threats. Because that's not an argument.